Uh -huh. I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. In this Inkscape tutorial, I want to go over vector half tones. They're very easy to do, and it's a good tool to have in your arsenal. So we'll go over the basics. I'll show you how to make a radial pattern like this. The next level up, we'll do something a little bit more challenging, which will be a stacked hexagonal look. And we'll finish off by applying the same principles by taking an image and then using that to make a vector half tone. So let's begin. I've had the question come up, what are the canvas settings that I use? If you're on the welcome screen, I'm on print with the template A4. It's 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. Looks like that. The exact settings don't matter too much, but it does help if you want to play along. The way that Inkscape does halftone patterns is through the Create Tiled Clones feature. And I do predict in the future, they'll probably have a filter you can just apply on top of anything. But for now, this is the way that you do it. So if you've never done Create Tiled Clones, go to Edit, Clone, Create Tiled Clones, and you'll see it will pop up on the sidebar menu. You want to be on Symmetry, P1, Simple Translation, and you'll have an object. In this case, I've got a yellow square. Down here, it says Rows, Columns. For this example, I have four by four. Click Create. And there we have our tiled clones. It takes the top one is always like a repeat, so get rid of that. This is the original clone, so if I change it, they all change. You can change the color, you can change the orientation. They're all tied to the original clone. Now to apply this to a half tone, go back to your menu and choose the trace tab. We're going to trace the opacity of the underlying object. So if these circles are the original size, this is the original clone here, as the opacity is reduced, so will the size of each clone. You got it? All right, there is a key feature. To make it work, you must click the trace the drawing under the clone sprayed items. If you forget to click this, it won't recognize what it's supposed to do and it will just tile out as many as you have here under rows and columns, just like that first example, four by four, or one by 10, whatever you picked. So let's do it. I've got here a pink square, which will be our original clone. Let's make a gradient with the rectangles and squares tool. It's red for some reason. Let's go straight black and we'll take the stroke off. To make the linear gradient, go back to fill and choose linear gradient. And there is the default. So it's gonna go from black to, it looks like it's going to white. Click on this pencil thing. I'm gonna show you one more thing. The pencil thing lets you edit the gradient. So if I click on the left node, You'll see it is full black, full opacity. If I click on the right node, the circle, it is actually black in color, but the opacity has been reduced to zero. Remember, that's what we're doing here. So go back to your Create Tile Clones. We did not forget to click Trace the Drawing Under the Clones, and you're gonna choose Opacity. We're telling Inkscape to take this little square, and based on the opacity of this underlying object, we're gonna change, go down to number three, the size. Get presence off. The only one you want selected here is size. But how many do you want to do? So rows and columns, why don't we say we'll do 20 rows and 30 columns. You can play with these numbers and see how it affects the result. But before you push create, go back to selection and choose what you want to serve as the original clone. It can be floating up here and it will still work, but just for habit, let's take it to the top. Here's hierarchy. Top of the hierarchy, I'll put it on the upper left-hand corner just so it's nice and neat. Now I'll push create. There we go. We've got our half tone, our very first half tone pattern. Let's do another one with the circle instead, and I'll modify the clone to show you how you can change the whole field. This time I'll leave it off the edge to show you that it still works. So 20 by 30, 20 rows was too many. Why don't we just do 15 this time and see what it looks like? Nice. I actually kind of like that with this gradient underneath it. If you're super detail oriented and you don't want to have to do any modifications, you can be more precise and make the actual rectangle gradient exactly how you want it and then zoom right in and put the original clone exactly up in the top, and that's fine. If that's the way you do it, I wanna do it this way just to show it's okay to, to kind of play with it a little bit because sometimes there's beauty found in the spontaneity. Let's make this bigger. See how that made it too much? Bring it down. Right there is pretty good. Okay, before we go to the next level up, which will be a radial one, I wanna show you this part right here in action in an actual application. Let's say you wanted to have it be the fill on some type of word here, so I have run. If you're not familiar with using a mask, this will be the ultimate 10 second lesson. So I've got my word here, make it white, hold shift and select the thing that you want to mask out, object mask set. And now we have it exactly, <laughs> there we go, make this a, Nike ad, run, something I need to do more of. 
The example here I want to show is you can change the source, underlying source size, or the actual clone size to get different types of fields of uh, halftone. We'll start with this one down here, but I have to make this a gradient. So select the object, fill and stroke, we're on fill, radial gradient. I'll click on my clone, create tiled clones. We've got trace the drawing under the clone selected on opacity, changing the size. And for rows and columns, we'll make it an even 30 by 30. Create. Let's take a look at that. That's a pretty cool design element made pretty easily with Inkscape. Let's try it with the larger circle and modify some of the gradient itself. So I have the object selected, radial gradient, but this time I'll change the outside perimeter to white, which it's still full transparency, but that's gonna make the in-between part different. So I select my clone, create tile clones. I'll stick with 30 by 30, create. Let's get the underlying gradient out of the way. And this is what I wanted to show you. You can play with the settings and pick what you like best. Maybe you're trying to go for a more densely packed halftone like this, or in this larger one, there's a little bit more variation in the step down in size. Let's grab this whole one and do an application. Control G. We'll slide it into, this almost reminds me of like product placement, where you might see an ad where this is a nice background and you pop a product on top of it. Now I want to do my favorite, which will be packed hexagons. It'll look more like this over here. The only difference in the settings will be we have to add a shift because we're going to layer three different halftones on top of each other. So click on shift and you want to shift the Y axis, which is up and down by 100%. That means that each row of clones will go down by one unit at a time and shifting on the X axis will do 50%. And the math works that way because of the shape itself of the hexagon. Just like before, we'll make our gradient. So here's our rectangle. I'm on fill. I'll do linear gradient. I'm actually going to move in the starting point in the gradient slightly by holding control, which locks in the axis. And I'll put it right about there. I'm cheating because I already have a hexagon made. But if you don't have one, you can do create polygons tool. This is set to star. I'll change it to polygons. But three corners means it'll be a triangle. We want six. And we'll see what we got. There it is. I'll use my pre-made one anyway. We'll zoom in. I'll be more accurate this time. Put it right up against the corner. Create tiled clones on trace. We have it on opacity, size, rows 20, columns. We'll do 50. Create. It's all spread out because for this effect, we need to stack it. I'll get rid of my gradient. Select everything. Group it. Control D will duplicate it. I'll move in tight so you can see what we did. The duplicate copy is on top. I will drag it down. It just clicked right into place because I have enable snapping on. I'm gonna take snapping off because it does get a little bit jammed up on this part. So this is the second one. I'll control D duplicate that. I'll put this one in between here. Control D duplicate that and put the final piece into place. Now take a look at this. That's my favorite thing about Inkscape. It's just math that lets us make really cool, beautiful things. I use this pattern actually for the thumbnail. Vector half tones. Let's do one more. Half tone from an image. Now you can use any image you want. I just pulled this one off of Pexels. I'll have a link to this example in the description below. I played with this before and I actually want to change the shift on this one. Instead of 150, I'm going to go negative 25 on the shift Y and negative 25 on the shift X because I'm trying to bunch up the pattern a little bit. Back to trace. I'm going with a simple black dot as my clone. Pop it in the corner there. For an image, I can't do opacity because the whole image is opaque. So let's change it to color. It's now going to look at the different variations of color and that will affect the size. So color and size on this one. For rows and columns, we'll do 70 by 70. See what we get. Create. Okay, we didn't get his whole body, but that's all right. Let's take the source image out of there and put a background underneath. That's pretty cool. I got one more thing to show you on the image. Let's say you want the lightness of the image to have more of the clones rather than the other way around. We'll do invert on this one. I'll actually change my clone to a lighter color because it's going to represent the lightness of the image. And then we'll drop that on top of a darker background. But I can't do straight white for this example because I'll lose it in the background of the canvas. Let's do a yellow right about there. So create tiled clones. Everything stays the same. I'm activating invert, create. Okay, that's kind of cool. Delete out the source. Pull a background in here. 
If you're going to use this in a project, I would take out the halftone pattern part you don't need, just isolate what you do like. And I hope this was helpful. If you have questions on these specifics or settings or you want to try some other things, there's so much more we can explore. You can change the opacity, you can make it look pixelated on purpose, all sorts of stuff that this tool has. And like I said, I do predict it will be included eventually as a filter, a set filter, kind of like Illustrator has. But for now, this is the way you can do it. It's fun, easy, fast, and that is all I got for you. Take care. Thank you.